Happy Tuesday Potassium, welcome back to story time. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's story actually. I had a lot of fun reading it. It's been a while and it really made me think about the class and just how funny they are. And so let's go ahead and get started with this one. Today we're gonna read The Antlered Ship. Um, it's by Dashka Slater and has illustration by the Fan Brothers. And I, I really like the story one because again, the illustrations are really pretty. I really like the details in here but i feel like the story has a lot of similarities to kind of our, our, our life in kindergarten let's go ahead and read it and see what i mean all right let's get going the antlered ship <clears throat> the day the antlered ship arrived marco wandered about the wide world He had so many questions. Why do some songs make you happy and others make you sad? Why don't trees ever talk? How deep does the sun go when it sinks into the sea? But when he posed these questions to the other foxes, they grew silent. What does that have to do with chicken stew? They would ask. Poor Marco. He's not getting the answers he wants. So Marco went down to the harbor to see the ship. Three deer greeted him at the gangplank. Marco wasn't surprised to learn that they were lost. And I just look at the pictures, I really like them. Very cool. We hope to hire a seaworthy crew, explained Sylvia, the captain. I'm afraid we aren't very good sailors. I will join you. Marco said. He thought to himself, I will search the seas for foxes who know the answers to my questions. A pigeon named Victor volunteered along with his entire flock. We want to have adventures, they cooed. Welcome aboard, Captain Sylvia said. We're going to a wonderful island with tall sweet grass and short sweet trees. When we get there, we'll eat a delectable dinner. Exciting. I love adventures. But the voyage was more difficult than anyone expected. It rained. Waves crashed over the sides of the deck. Why is water so wet? Marco wondered. I've always wondered that same thing too. The pigeons weren't used to the hard work of raising and lowering sails. After the first day, they went below decks to play checkers and stayed there. My goodness, who's taking care of the sails then? The deer worried about sharp rocks and fierce pirates and feeling seasick. They huddled in the bow and waited for something bad to happen. Oh man, it's not going well so far. After days of drifting and dining on crackers, the animals were damp and cranky. I think I would be too. We should have stayed in the woods, Sylvia said. Deer aren't supposed to go to sea. We should have stayed in the park, added Victor. Pigeons aren't supposed to do hard labor. Marco eyed the deer and the pigeons. Foxes aren't supposed to be vegetarian, he said. Still, we must do the best we can. Poor crew, they all look so sad. That evening, Marco found a recipe book in the galley and cooked a warm and reviving stew. Should we look at the charts? He asked. After everyone had eaten, they got everyone together enjoying a meal. We might find adventure here, said Victor, right there. And trouble here, said Sylvia, but... We'll find the island with tall sweet grass and short sweet trees here. And perhaps foxes too, Marco thought. Foxes with answers. Because he has so many questions. Just like some people I know. As they plotted their course, the wind picked up. The storm clouds thinned into marvelous swirls. Raise the sails, Sylvia cried. 
And just look at how cool their ship looks in that little picture there. Wow. In the morning, they came to the maze of sharp rocks, each one large enough to tear the bottom from the boat. That's scary. But the pigeons flew ahead, tracing a path through the shoals and sharp rocks to the safety of the open sea. Oh, there they are, the pigeons doing their job and helping out. How nice. The next afternoon, a pirate ship burst from behind a rocky island. Turn over your treasure, the pirate captain bellowed, or we'll put a hole in your helm. Oh man, these guys look a little scary. Lower the antl antlers, Sylvia commanded. The ship clashed, crashed, and smashed until the pirates turned and fled. Good riddance, I think. That evening, an island appeared on the horizon with tall, waving grasses and short, swaying trees. Is that what they're looking for? We found it, Sylvia cried. We've triumphed, Victor cooed. Do you see any foxes? Marco asked. He really wants to meet some foxes. The deer grazed the grass and nibbled the trees. The pigeons told stories of their adventures to a flock of admiring seagulls. And Marco scoured the island for foxes. There he goes. But he didn't find any. Poor Marco. I have failed, Marco told Victor and Sylvia. No foxes. No one to answer my questions. What questions? Victor asked. Marco took a deep breath. Do islands like being alone? Do waves look more like horses or swans? And what's the best way to find a friend you can talk to? He wondered. That last one is easy, Sylvia said. You make friends by eating together. I disagree, said Victor. You make friends by having adventures together. Maybe you're both right, Marco said. But I think you make friends by asking them questions. Well then, you Sylvia. Should we head home tomorrow? Or should we visit the island of scrumptious shrubbery? Are two adventures enough? asked Victor. Or should we have at least one more? Is it better to know what's going to happen? wondered Marco. Or better to be surprised? There were so many questions left to answer and so many more to ask. So in the morning, they raced the anchor and hoisted the heavy sails. They knew now that the wind would come and go. The clouds would sometimes make marvelous swirls and sometimes make them wet. And that everything they hoped to find could be found aboard an anchored ship. On the way to wherever they are going. The end. And so... I really like this one because it, it's, I feel it's kind of the children go through something very similar at school. They come in, they have so many questions that they want answers to, and then sometimes they're hard questions. And, and if I don't have an answer for them, you know, they'll try to figure it out on their own. And we all eat together and we all kind of have adventures together. And that's how we became a family in our classroom. And so I, I think this is a really great book to read to our class. And so it really makes me think about them. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.